Uma Krebliv, and also uh, International Boxing Association officials, and the former world heavyweight champion Roy Jones, who is a legend. Mm -hmm. So it's a very critical day for Sri Lanka, well, not only for boxing, as a country. Yes. Because I want to, since he came on a personal invitation of mine, Ministry, nor the National mm -hmm. Olympic Committee has not funded boxing. So this is the first time we got a 10 million worth of gloves. Hi, I'm Hansana Balasuria from LN Sports and I'm here with Dan Gomez, the president of the Boxing Association of Sri Lanka. How are you doing today? Great. Yeah. Um, so it has come to our attention that the uh, International the Boxing Federation's president visited Sri Lanka for the first time. How important was that visit? I think it's very important to Sri Lanka. 200 countries box. There are only few sports which all the countries take part. The most popular one, I would say, football. Football, all 200 countries take part and all 200 countries want to play the World Cup. So is boxing. So, it's so important for Sri Lanka, such a small nation in boxing, to be recognized for a visit by the President of the International Boxing Federation Association, Uma Krebliv, and also uh, International Boxing Association officials and the former world heavyweight champion Roy Jones, who is a legend. Mm -hmm. So it's a very critical day for Sri Lanka, well, not only for boxing, as a country. Yes. Because I want to, since he came on a personal invitation of mine, mm -hmm. and I am a director of International Boxing Association as well, right. and the Asian Association as well, both. Uh, I wanted them to see the potential of Sri Lanka mm -hmm. as a sporting hub for Asia yes. because it's a very neutral country. Say for example, there's a training centre in Patiala, India, which we go and create. It's a very sophisticated centre which is the closest centre. The other ones are in Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, uh, Thailand, etc. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are very formidable boxing countries. But some of the other countries like cannot uh, you know, take part in uh, our training Patiala. Say, a Pakistani yeah. team cannot train there. So, if you have something in Sri Lanka, a training international training center, and where we can't afford to travel, it's a great advantage. Yes. Number one. Number two, there is sports tourism. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Kremli, being a Russian billionaire, mm -hmm. is interested in investing in Sri Lanka. Right. So, he is bringing. Uh, what we call IBA Pro Boxing mm -hmm. to Sri Lanka. So it's a great opportunity in terms of, uh, you know, boxing, in terms of Sri Lanka, in terms of sports, uh, how we could position the country. Right. So I think we achieved that because um, he came in his private jet mm -hmm. from Thailand with his team. And the other option was bringing the brand ambassador for women's sports. Uh, Zaina Nasa, mm -hmm. who is the first woman who fought uh, in the association to have the hijab uh, to box. So he is very influential. He's made all our leaders, the Prime Minister, Minister of Sports, Roshan Ranasinghe, and they were very fruitful and they were very open. Mm -hmm. And also, we managed to get uh, him to come in to send you know, four or five boxers to Russia for training, right. a longer period. Because Russia, Uzbekistan, Cuba, Kazakhstan are the most formidable boxing countries in the world. Yeah. So we managed to get that. He also brought 10 million worth of boxing gloves. Yes. Unfortunately, the schools didn't have boxing gloves yeah. uh, because for the last 20 years, uh, the sports ministry, nor the National yeah. Olympic Committee has not funded boxing. So it was always on corporate and private funding. Yes. So this is the first time we got a 10 million worth of gloves mm -hmm. uh, for the schools and for the major clubs like the Air Force, Army, Police, Navy, etc. So it's a great visit and a great victory for Sri Lanka. And personally, I'm humbled by it. Yes, I guess in like terms of like tourism and especially for sports 
people in Sri Lanka, like I guess that message would have helped a lot. And even like getting in investors into such sports, develop, it helps develop uh, kids, you know, go into and achieve their dreams, I guess. What are your long term and short term um, goals or plans to develop boxing in the country? I think the current uh, boxing situation is not very good. That's basically because we don't have the funding even to have the national events. We need about at least 8 million rupees to do the local funding. That is yes. to have the local means. So we do not have that money to uh, you know do the meet so we are struggling to have that mm. so in addition to that to get the international training and international facilities for our boxers how do we do that so we are we have also requested fifty thousand uh, dollars for our future development in the shorter term our target is basically the commonwealth games right. because in the commonwealth games we have a better chance of winning a medal but the country took 68 years mm -hmm. and for me personally about 20 years to get the three medals in 2018 at the Commonwealth Games in Australia. So it's a, it's a task mm -hmm. but now we are investing in the youth, uh, not more in the senior team because right. some of them are a bit older yes. and they will retire before the next Commonwealth Games. Mm -hmm. So the longer plan is for a four year plan for the Commonwealth Games and the eight-year plan for the Olympics in USA, both. And also providing some people who retire to get into professional boxing. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of immediate plans that I have for the next uh, uh, 12 months. Right. So for the ones that retired or uh, uh, is not able to fight anymore, you mean like coaching to get them into coaching or how does that work? This year we managed the International Boxing Federation to give six scholarships mm -hmm. basically to sit for the exam and go for a training program for six of our boxers, six of our coaches. Right. So we have uh, coaches from the Army, Air Force, Navy and the police all qualified. Okay. So which is a very good uh, opportunity for uh, all the coaches as well. Because me being in the International Boxing Association as a director, I can open doors more for Sri Lanka. One of the major challenges that we are facing is the financial crisis and like the, from the financial situation we are finding it difficult. Are there any other challenges, because I think there might be so much more, are there any challenges that you might be able to point out that the Boxing Federation is facing to bring forward this sport? I think. Uh, People must understand that uh, I'm a tough leader. Mm -hmm. I, I uh, ran large companies as a group director of MA Holdings, right. uh, which had 11 uh, 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 operating in 11 countries, and also as the chairman of Hela Clothing, which had about 40,000 people in three countries. So I'm very good with people on the ground level, but I'm a tough leader. Mm -hmm. I call the shots uh, very focused and I don't stand for, you know, all this nonsense and politics. Yes. So, we give, the association gives only tickets, air tickets and accommodation costs for the athletes, right. not for the officials. For the last 20 years, other than the ticket for the Olympics and of the Commonwealth Games, which the government is providing, I would have traveled to 27, 28 countries, but all on at my cost. So every official also has to set the stand, mm. you know, because I am contributing financially to the association, no joy trips. Yeah. So that pisses off some of the officials, number one. Number two, everything is decided on meritocracy. You know, it doesn't matter whether they went to my school, Royal College, or whether they are from the most rural areas, it doesn't matter to me. They all are treated the same. So sometimes these things uh, upsets mm. the officials as well and especially when you now there was an incident where one of the officials which are not supposed to get involved wanted to send the eighth rank fellow you know before the sixth and the seventh rank fellow for Commonwealth Games and I took by the selection committee headed by General Jagat Jayasuriya 
and said nothing doing. You know, National Olympic Committee can say, uh, the, the government can say, we don't, we don't take uh, these kind of political pressures or ministerial pressures or the Olympic Committee pressures. We do the right thing, right thing for the country and meritocracy. And the people in the association senior positions are very, very tough on that. Mm -hmm. So that is why we might not be the most popular association, but Asia recognizes Sri Lanka Boxing Association as one of the best run organizations in this part of the world. And that's a great credit yeah. uh, to compete with any of the best Asian nations, which is in boxing. Of course, yeah, and that's nice to hear that there's some organization that's working properly and that it's not being influenced by other parties because I think that's one of the major issues that the country is facing and is not able to move forward in anything because of corruption and other influences. People who are qualified is not given the spot. By doing so, we fall back. Yes. How long do you think it will take for boxing? to win a medal for Sri Lanka? Boxing has been winning medals on and off, not consistently. Every yes. year we win some medals internationally. Mm -hmm. And the more we take part, we have more the opportunities to win. Winning an Olympic medal, I think it's a eight-year task, minimum. Mm -hmm. Winning a Commonwealth Games medal, a four-year task. So it's possible because I managed to get a boxer, uh, Anurudha Ratnayaka, mm -hmm. After 40 years, within an eight-year period, to compete at the Olympic Games, and also managed to win uh, three medals uh, at the Commonwealth Champ uh, Games in uh, in uh, Brisbane. So we can do it, mm -hmm. even at the Olympics, we can do it. But only, I would say, in the first three waves, not beyond that, because we don't have the, I would say, the body strength. Uh, to fight a Cuban or a guy from Kazakhstan or a Russian yes. in the heavier weights. No chance. Mm -hmm. That's a reality. Yeah. Because people will say uh, we can, but once in a lifetime, if we get a heavyweight champion, we will do it. But yeah. light flyweight, flyweight, featherweight, and maybe bantamweight, we certainly can fight anybody in the world. Mm -hmm. Because they are fast and you can win more on technique rather than the sheer power. Mm -hmm. But we don't have the proper coaching because we managed to get Anruddha because we had a Cuban coach. We need, you know, to fight internationally with international coaches, yes. not Sri Lankan coaches. We need three coaches at the ringside. That is the head coach, mm -hmm. the assistant coach and the corner man. All three are important. Generally, any other country, even India, they have three coaches, even at the international meet, the doctor, a masseur, and the psychologist. Mm -hmm. Most of the country. We, sometimes we don't have three people even at yeah. the ringside. So we have one coach and we have most probably, we have to borrow a coach from Nepal or India or from one of the friendly countries. But Unfortunately, you can see more officials in the games rather than more than the athletes. And these are the things we need to stop if you want to win medals. Mm. We must start right at the top, taking the hard calls, you know, and sometimes it's difficult because associations and the national federations depend on votes. Mm -hmm. So if you make some tough calls, they lose the votes. Yeah. Then they don't get elected. Yeah. So it's a chicken and egg situation. Right. But we need to change all those if you think of winning yeah. medals. And once in a lifetime, you'll have a Sangakkara, yeah. a Muralidharan, a Yupun Abekon, you know, ACM Lafir. That's it. Sheer talent. Yes. Sri Lankans are resilient, Sri Lankans are talented, but there is no meritocracy, no fair play no support and all the priorities are put on some things which the sports ministers need to get votes so they need to build a ground in their electorate 
and the grounds are neglected. So all we do all the wrong things, but we don't do the right things to win a medal. A eight year plan, a focused plan, pick the young side. Some federations do it. Not that everybody is not doing it. They are doing it. And it is mostly funded by private individuals. I can name a handful of associations which is funded mm -hmm. by the president or the vice president. And uh, that's why those associations, the athletes have been taking part in international. Other associations, it's like playing at home. Sure, I think like we are well lacking on the funding and the supporting when it comes to uh, sports and committed uh, people to help build the sport. So thankfully, like boxing has got you to you know, support and bring forward the sport. So you are, are you focusing on any new generation of like, kids to bring forward and to like, put them for Olympics? Is there anyone that... Of course, know? we have got a national youth team. After every fight, three minutes, first round, he moved away from that. Dropped the father and went for another coach. These are lessons we need to understand.